Thank you. You're welcome. You know, Sarah, I had one last fall, and there were like seven or eight agents in the in the conference room, and they had it on Zoom too, and they probably had about 15 other agents watching it Zoom. So and I'm kind of glad they did that because they didn't have enough room in their conference room. Hey buddy. Hey man, how are you? I'm good. We you here with Crown Service. Hey man, Kyle Sarn. It's nice to meet you, Kyle. Uh Kara, I'm sure you know this by now because I can't get anything over anybody, but did you know that uh Valley Pest Control sold out and so did Kirkland's last Thursday? I did not know about Kirkland's. I knew about Valley. Yeah, I saw Gary about four to six weeks ago whenever he uh uh signed the contract that day. He and I are friendly competitors. We've never been ugly to each other. But uh he was telling me all about it. And then we knew something was up with Kirkland's for about a month. And then we found out about it like a week before last. Who did they sell to? They sold to Wayne's Environmental. Uh, which kind of changes things a whole lot for uh Wayne's. I mean for Kirkland's and all those people because Wayne's Environmental wants perfect houses. They don't do fungus treatments. And they don't, you know, and they'll phase out of that before too long, but they, they don't do fungus treatments. They want it to all have, uh, um, they want it to be perfect, you know, and they want to have bake stations on them too. So, we've got more people coming in. Ah. Hey, sorry. No. I'll get started. I'm Wayne Hammerly. Have we met? No, I'm Emily. Yes. Yeah. I'm Emily. Hi, Emily. I was looking for you over on the 100 Club, but I don't see you anywhere. Did they finally fire me? I think so. Oh, really? Somebody drew, a, somebody drew a mustache and a goatee on your face. I don't know who that was. So, if y'all don't mind, we'll get started. Is that okay? Oh, yeah. And, and this is hard for me to. Because they're recording, so I'm gonna. Can I give you my email, or just say I've got a Zoom and text. Sure. One thing. I'm just gonna stop and get some. There's that right there. Is if you decide you want to order a termite letter, that would be the information we need to have. Okay. And it's got my pricing in the top right hand corner. So nice to meet you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She's going to have a copy of it too. So if you lose that, she can. Okay. Yeah, you can just fill it out, email it to that email address. And Perfect. It's on the business card and you should be good to go. All right. Nice, nice, to, meet you. nice to meet you. Looks like somebody else is here. I'm not sure. Maybe that's the report. Carrie, you back? Or are you still busy? I got you on audio the whole time. Oh, okay. She just doesn't want to show us. She just don't want to show us her face. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to sit down. Is that okay with you? And I'm sorry I don't have a mask on. But... Oh, there we go. Oh. I think it's it's optional now. Okay. Well, and I, I was exposed five times last year. Seems like there's four people on. Okay. Would that be including me? Oh, wait a minute. No, that's that's four people logged in other than. You. There we go. Okay. So let's just go on and talk about termite letters because that's what I really enjoy talking about. And Kara, I may call on you, okay? Pick on Emily. What? <laughs> so just a brief you know, discussion about, you know, Crown Service and how we started. My partner, Steve Corbett, and I started in the business a little, it was three years ago last February, Kara. And uh, we, it was he and I, and three years later, over 6,000 customers, either termite letters or termite jobs or pest control jobs. Uh, and one person with multiple jobs is still just one customer. Uh, we've been very fortunate. We've grown to nine people now uh, and uh, seven vehicles. And so we've been very blessed. We even were able to thrive during COVID as, as most real estate agents that are working hard do. Uh, Steve is a, from North Carolina. He's a farm boy. 
you know, you've been mixing, mixing farm chemicals forever. And I grew up in real estate construction business and uh, we uh, hated the family business. And that, Steve and I met at Terminex almost 10 years ago. And uh, the big difference between me and a lot of real estate, a lot of people in the termite business is, is that I've sold real estate and built houses. And uh, a lot of difference between me and a lot of real estate agents as well is that I've been in crawl spaces and most of them have it. You don't go on one, I'll take you. You sure? Okay. I got all kinds of stuff you can wear. Uh, I would I need like the Speedy C level four hazmat suit. I don't, I don't like things. You know, it's funny. I don't like things either, but I just wear a sweater, zip it up, and no. go on. So. Um, but anyway, so let's talk about termite letters. Kara, can you name some of the five things? Anybody else that wants to, to pipe in? Do you know the five things we look for on a termite letter? Five different types of termites. Okay. Well, that's a good start. One of them is termites. I'll have, yeah, do you know one of them? It's okay. I won't put you on spot. No. I mean, I mean wood rot. Yeah, wood rot, like fungus. It's mold. just fungus, not mold. Oh, fungus. We'll talk about mold in a second. Okay. So I'll go on and, and, and save you all the pain. It's, it's subterranean termites or any kind of termites that are in the area. Wood boring beetles and powder post beetles. I usually find those in really, really older homes. Um, like in downtown Madison, where the homes are so old they didn't kill dry the wood, and I find it there. Uh, and out by the river, these houses are all, a lot of them are just eat up with powder post beetles. It's really bad. Um, some we can treat, some the state of Alabama has to approve, and that, that's where it gets really bad after, when the state gets involved because it gets really expensive. But anyway, uh, dry wood termites are in South Alabama, they'll never be up here. And then wood decaying fungus is my arch enemy all day. The state says day in and day out, there are some other conditions, but day in and day out, that it's a moisture level reading in the wood that's 20% or greater when I probe it, probe it. If there's something on the boards, then 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 there's act, it's active fungus. Uh, the state does not cover the transaction of mold. Um, I get calls daily. It says I need you to call. I need you to come and treat this mold in the house. And my first question is, who said the mold work? Most of the time, it's the home inspector. Carrie, you ever had one of those? Anyway. Yes. So just so you know, home inspectors aren't licensed or are they qualified to say something mold or fungus or mildew. They usually start the train ride and uh, it usually ends up on my desk, but the state and termite letters all say it, that it's not a mold report. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but that's exactly what it's saying is they do not regulate mold for the transaction of real estate. Um, they do, however, regulate wood decaying fungus, and, and it, it is its name. It does decay the wood in your cross space. I've seen boards that had it so bad, they were split in the middle and one end of the board went all the way down and touched the ground in the cross space. I've seen floors that were cracked all the way along the, you know, the eight or 10 board joists and they're all cracked and it's all from wood decaying fungus. There's no termite activity there. And the wood's dripping wet, Normally they have insulation in the four joists. That happens a lot. Uh, but wood decaying fungus is the biggest one. I can, there's a lot that we can do uh, to help you with that. Uh, we, we do treat wood decaying fungus. We treat for termites. Um, I'm even getting more and more rat calls because the home inspector found rat droppings in the attic or the cross space. And they want me to come do something about it. We do that. Um, but those are the five things we look for. I'm not looking for spiders. I'm not looking for snakes. That's not a part of, of what my scope of work is that day. Um, we are a inspection company, first and foremost. Uh, we, we are not a sales company. My inspectors are not out there to make a sale. They are out there, however to get the house that we're inspecting ready to go to close. And I do have four of the heaviest hitters that ever worked for Terminex working for me. So we all understand the sales process. We understand that somebody's got to buy something sometimes oh. in order. Somebody else wants to. Oh. 
Nina. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hi, Nina. Hi, Nina. Anyway, um, there we go. Hey, Randall. This is a little difficult. Y'all bear with me, okay? I'm used to a room full of people, and I do Zoom, but I'm not used to, to a hybrid, but we'll we'll get through it. Um, where was I? Um, oh, I'm not, no spiders and no snakes. Spiders and snakes. It's just, just the five them. things that we're supposed to look for. But let's talk about fungus. Um, and it's really important that, that real estate agents understand, because I get agents that cause a lot of problems for everybody in the real estate transaction. Most of them are new, and 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 then they just throw their hands up and say, "Well, I'm just the go-between." Well, you are, but you kind of need to know what you're what you're putting everybody in. So it, it it's not it's not mold. The state doesn't regulate mold. Everybody needs to be able to say that. The state doesn't regulate mold for transaction real estate. You know, we're ready to go to the closing table. It has what became fungus, and we have it treated, but you know. So, so that, and I've had agents that, that were the listing agent that said, look, we had the fungus treated. You know, well, what'd you do for the mold? Well, that's what it came fungus. We had it treated and the state doesn't regulate mold. So we're ready to go to closing paper. So there's a lot, you know, and then sometimes it, it doesn't work out. Um, but when you have fungus, there are things that we have to look for. Uh, day in and day out, again, the number's 20%. I have had some that were 18 to 18 and a half and it was June, early June, and I had to get a treatment. And the reason I did is because the insulation actually had water hanging off of it. And the, the, the air conditioner trunk lines underneath had water hanging off of it. So we did have to pull the insulation out, replace the vapor barrier. We do change the vents out if they're the old louver vents and then treat the affected area. And I promise you, I always treat for more than what I, what I charge for because I don't know what's on the, the other side of the insulation against the, the uh, uh, subfloor, and I can't pull all of it out to look. So, but we do remove it. Please don't ever put it back. Don't ever recommend to your people to put it back. Um, you know, I didn't have it in my house, and my wife said her feet were cold. And I told her to put on socks. You can't put insulation in floor joists because there's a long story to that with my personal history but you can't do that because it'll just come back and whoever's buying the house will do it again in five to seven years uh, and 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 that's why and sometimes sooner um, but the reason that we replace the vapor barrier for the most part is because whenever you do remove insulation it destroys the vapor barrier because there's wires holding it up and it just rips and tears and pokes holes in it so that's a really cheap price of the uh, of the uh, of the treatment. Uh, vents are fifty dollars a piece to replace them. The average house has six to eight vents on it, sometimes less. Uh, we never put enough in when I was building in the '80s, and they don't put enough in now. But the difference in houses back then and now is is, is from the front corner to the back corner. Most houses were about. 24 to 28 feet, you know, now, you know, they're 45 to, to 52 feet, you know, and there's, there's a 30 foot patio across the back that blocks half the back of the house. And then you've got most of the, you know, the garage blocks the, the right side of the house. And then you got a big front porch, front porches are gotten bigger these days. So you don't get the airflow. And I, I had a, um, an agent actually out of this office and, she had fungus in her house. It was a brand new house, and we helped her out with that. So, anyway, um, so fungus is a big thing for us. Uh, anybody have any questions? Please ask questions. How much does it cost to treat the fungus? That's a good question. So, my average cost on fungus treatment just to spray fungus. Mm -hmm. So there's no insulation in there and there's no, it's about 450. Okay. And it just depends, sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more, just depending on how large the house. 
Okay. But you got a 2,000 square foot house and it's got five or six spots in it, you know, then, then we just, you know, it's about 450. We always overspray. I always treat for more than, and once I give you a price, I'm not going to go back on that price. I'm not, I'm not going to. So if I, let's say I gave you 450 and I remove the insulation and the whole thing's eat up with fungus, you know, on the floor, sub floor and everything, I don't ever go back. I mean, it just, it is what it is. We'll treat the whole thing. I mean, so once I give a price, that's the end of it. The only time I've only changed once. And the only time I did it that one time was because there were actually live termites that were hidden by the insulation. And the house had been drilled and there were live termites hidden by the insulation. And that was the only time I ever, and it didn't have a bond on it. So, um, Randall, any questions? No, Kara. Did she leave us? She did. She might be on her way in here. Who knows? Anyway, uh, so that's the average. Uh, to remove insulation, it's the nastiest, dirtiest job I have. It, it's just horrible. And and I'm at about 75 cents a square foot, and I do adjust up or down a little bit. Um, it's it's difficult, you know, they're they're all difficult. Uh, you know, if I've got one that's eight blocks high, you know, or seven blocks high, and you know, and there's plenty of room to work around in there. You know, it's about 60 cents a square foot. If I got one that's three block high, I gotta go all the way down to one end and go all the way back down to the other end and push insulation out. That's about 75 cents to a dollar. There is a little aggravation factor. It's 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 highly labor intensive. Yeah. I mean, it just is. And so, but I try my average is around 75 cents a square foot uh, for removing it. And when we remove it, we we pull it out, we bag it up or they bail it up, and that includes putting it up, pulling it, putting it on a trailer, and hauling it off, and taking it to the dump. Um, if you've got a house in Hartzell, for example, that's a little more difficult for me to do. We're not actively pursuing customers in Morgan County, but if anybody here has a house, we'll go almost anywhere for it. Um, and I say almost because I'm not going to go to Hansel. You know, somebody called me the other day, we go to Hansel. I'm like, I just can't do it. Uh, so, um, and then, um, and then we, we usually pull out the old vapor barrier. Sometimes we lay over, but there's a lot of trash that's laying around with it. So, then lay down new vapor barrier, and then we treat it. Uh, and we treat it after we put the new vapor barrier in because it marks up the vapor barrier. And you know I've been there. So there is overspray, there is drip. Is she making breakfast, Randall? No, she's cleaning up breakfast. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so it is wet when we get through. It, it, it's going to be wet. If your home inspector comes in two or three days later in the middle of summer, it's still going to be wet. And it's because my product is still soaking in. And it and it can take two to three months for the wood to actually start drying out in the summertime whenever we do a treatment. But that's just normal. All that's fine. And it will still read high. You know, I had a home inspector one time. He's one of the few home inspectors that actually uses a moisture meter and doesn't give it to you on site. And he said, you know, well, it's 23% under there, you know, and it's dripping wet. I'm like, I just got to do treatment. So there's not anything I can do once I treat it. It's going to be wet. It's going to be wet for a little while. Uh, if I treat it in late August, it could be October before it's dried out enough. But that's just the way it goes in its life with us. Um, vents are pretty easy to change. Uh, we don't cut in vents. Um, I have cut, you know, have y'all seen where they, you know, all blocks are like this and they've got the holes going up. And then on old houses, you know, they've turned the block sideways and there's two holes in the foundation and that's the vents. Has anybody ever seen that? Well, I'll replace those, but those are about $175 a piece because I physically have to cut that block out mm -hmm. and not damage anything um, and, then, and then replace it. But just a normal vent, it's those louvered vents. Um, they're, we call them contractor vents or, you know, louvered vents, whatever you'll call them. Uh, those come out relatively easy, and then we put ours back. We put ours in. 
Uh, they used to have gray, they don't have gray anymore. They usually come in brown and black. Um, and then uh, we do sump pump work. There are people that do, uh, will do fill lines. Uh, a lot of people nowadays are, are wanting, you know, encapsulations for everything. Uh, and, and it gets a little different because we've got a lot of people moving in, you know, and people from California and Virginia and all this, you know, these home inspectors are killing me because they use the word mold. Well, in other states, the states do, you know, require treatment for mold, but they don't down here. Um, and so it, it's, a, um, it's an interesting venture, but you as an agent, and I can help you, and I'm more than happy to help you, and I'll be happy to talk to your clients, uh, but you as an agent need to be able to say, you know, that's not what we do. That, you know, the, 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 you know, and the, there's a lot of good home inspectors that don't use the mold work. I want to get to know them because they're really good and they really cause the least amount of trouble. Um, but uh, anyway, so I'm more than happy to help with that. Um, I don't do snakes, uh, just so everybody knows. I don't handle the church, I'm not going to handle the work. So it's not a part of your report. Uh, you know, my son doesn't do snakes. Uh, he's had rats fall out on him on insulation pulls, and that just freaks him out pretty bad. So, actually, one walked right in the center of his back one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a guy that worked for us knocked it off his back. And he had to go take a break for a minute. <laughs> it's just, I would still be it was a big rat. It was about that big, you know. So, I mean, it was it was a good size, healthy rat. And the problem with rats is, is that usually when there's rats in a cross place or mice, there are snakes because that's where they get food. And so we, we try and get that cleared out as soon as we can, get away from it all. Um, there are snake skins in a lot. Of, I've been fortunate so far this year. And I just mentioned the snake word, and I'll find one today, I know. Aren't they coming out? Now? They're now. They're out now. Mm -hmm. No, they are. They're out now. I can't. So um, anyway, back to, to, to crawl space work. We, we do some pumps, but only when we have to. And the first thing that I look at and that I'm looking for is, is that I'm looking outside to see if the, 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 the landscaping is such that, that your mulch and your dirt all, all point towards the foundation. You know, I'm looking to see um, if your gutter drains, you know, when the gutter downspout drains and hits the splash block, if it runs back in the foundation, I see that an awful lot. I can correct about 90 to 95% of cross space water issues with with uh, with the gutter now spout drains, you know, and it goes that we extend them out 10 feet. Um, it has a pop up on it, so they pop up. Actually, we did that in my personal house two years ago. Uh, I went last February, I went to see my house. And um, if you'll remember, last year and the year before, the rainy season was February. And it, yes, and this year it was March, so things are a lot slower right now. I picked up though, uh, but um, I had three feet of water in my crawl space and the house been on the market. It was before the, this, you know, craziness, but it had been, been on the market 16 days and it rained almost every day during that time. And, and the agent said, well, everybody wants, you know, a sump pump and encapsulation. And uh, the water was gone three days later. My partner and I sealed five pipe penetrations coming through the block. Uh, there was a former, uh, septic tank, we sealed that one. There was the uh, uh, sewer line, a water line, and a gas line. There was one other line. And then we fixed around the, the air conditioner trunk line. And now I don't have any water except I have one little trickle because my gutter is kinked and water runs right there and it, it does run into it. It's one little trickle. And so, and, and I still have insulation in my floor joists because I don't have active fungus and I check it every summer. So, and it's real high, it's about seven. The higher crawl space is, the better off you are that your chances are that you're not gonna have fungus, uh, much better. And we, I find a lot of previous fungus in there. Sometimes the fungus word won't go away and people just want something done and, and I'll do it, but I can't require it. So if I go in there and there's previous fungus and, and I show you pictures and it's 16% everywhere under there, you know, um, at the owner's request, the, 
the owner or the purchaser it is the one that's buying my service it's not in the real estate transaction and usually it's the seller so at the owner's request you know i can do a fungus treatment on it bill it to close and everything i do bills to close it. um we've been very fortunate with that uh but i, I only do it whenever i'm asked to i don't require it and uh, a lot of people require fungus treatment at 16 percent, and i don't because that's you know if I'm at, if it's if it's May and I'm at 19 and a half, yeah, I'm gonna have to do something because we're all gonna be trouble but in trouble about three or four weeks. Uh, so that's you know kind of what the question. Mm -hmm. Oh please, Randall, any question? No, just a statement. Okay, ventilation, ventilation very important. I know that with roofs for sure. Yes. Uh, how is your um, you talk about the louvers? Uh -huh. How is yours different? They're an automatic vent. It's a it's a spring loaded vent that automatically open and close. And the maintenance on it's pretty simple. There there's springs actually over here. And when the temperature of the spring heats up to a certain amount, uh, it'll open. And the yeah. maintenance is real simple. You take a W a can of WD forty. You can do it once in the spring and once in the fall. Seriously, and it's got a straw on it. And you just stick it up in the corner and spray. And it'll it'll it over in the far on the sides. In the top corner and spray both sides and that that'll keep the spring from getting gummed up otherwise those things last about seven to ten years before they start sticking so it's just you know like anything else nothing's forever uh, but the best part is is you don't have to remember to go out there and open and close them. Uh, when i was working for my dad when i was a kid he owned so much rental property that I'd spent two weeks in the spring and two weeks in the fall opening and closing the vents. And that, that's what I did the whole time. So, you know, and then in the wintertime, whenever pipes froze, because nobody would leave there, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we've, uh, and let's talk about the information on termite letters. So, uh, Sarah, right, is that the one up there? Yes. Okay. So Sarah has a copy of this, and uh, she's going to email it to anybody that wants it, and I've left copies all over here. But this is just the information I need. It's pretty simple. Uh, it takes you about three minutes to fill it out, and it saves, it saves us all um, the address, buyer's name, phone number, email address. Those are important to me because we do contact them after the sale, especially if I've done a termite treatment on it. I need to get that contract bond, same thing, over into their name. Uh, and, and that's very important. You know, closing attorney, the date it closes. And the reason I need the date it closes is because my goal is to get out there, is, is to get out there within 24 to 48 hours. I'm going in the busy season. Sometimes it could be 72 hours from the time you order it so we can schedule and get out there. And then my goal on the back side of that is to get you the and that's business hours. And my goal on the back side is to get you the, the report one way or the other within 24, 48 hours of, of when we've done the inspection. So we do sometimes end up having to schedule them according to closing date. If I've got one that closes in three weeks, you know, and then one that closes in four weeks, I'm going to do the one that closes in three weeks first. Slab or crawl, that depends on who I send. I got a guy that works for me that's retired. He only does basements. She's not even gonna let your cup sit there and get cold, is she? <laughs> I got a guy that's retired that, that we worked at Terminex and he does all my slabs and bases for me uh, and then crawl spaces. Vacant or occupied is very important. If it's vacant, it's on e-key. We all have e-keys. Everybody that inspects for my company has e-key just like you do. So I can just go right in. Um, so if it's vacant, I just go. We just go, you know, and and Beverly schedules it, and and it all those go on five o'clock on our schedule. And we pick them up before we go home that day. And a lot of times, you've got one in Athens, and I've already got an appointment in Athens. I'll do my appointment and then catch it on the way out of town. So we do a lot of that. Occupied, it's real important that y'all help me out with occupied houses. So if you're the buyer's agent, I need you to make sure you contact the listing agent and let them know we're coming. Um, I've, I've had too many people want to put my butt because I didn't know. I mean, 
there's no car in the driveway. It happens to be in the garage, you know, and I've knocked on the door and I've rung the doorbell, you know, and I got my E key and I go in and I got a guy who, who's sleeping in his bedroom and he's literally about to whip my butt. That's happened two or three times. Um, yeah. My partner and I have, you know, it's, it's the one where you walk in the front door and you're in the living room and you get to the hallway and at the end of the hall is a bathroom and mama coming out of the bathroom. Yeah. Soaking wet and butt naked is not fun for me because it scares her to death or it scares me to death, you know, and I just, I don't want the headache. And so, you know, and, and when all things, I mean, you know, and it's funny because even we do our very best, y'all do your best and we do our best. You know, we've notified you, you've notified the listing agent, listing agent notified daddy, and guess what? Daddy forgot to tell mama. You know, and that happens mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, and I've had everything that can happen to me happen. I was telling that to, to a friend of mine who's a canine policeman here in, in, in Madison. I said, except for finding a dead body. Well, that afternoon, there was a next door neighbor to a house we were inspecting and he was on drugs and he was swinging a started weed whacker at my inspector and, and, and the, the seller called the police. So it got pretty ugly and, you know, and, and so, but uh, anyway, back to the sheet, just um, if there is a, you know, if there is a combination box, please give it to us. That's kind of important if you want me to go in. Uh, you know, with buyer's agent, listing agent, any notes, any notes that, that, that are pertinent, for example, if you're going to meet me there and it's a vacant house, that's kind of important for me to know. You know, it's real important. Yeah. You know, I got there at 10 o'clock and I don't know when you thought I was coming. If you want me to call you when I'm on the way, those are important notes for me to have. I mean, that's, that's just important stuff. Uh, what else? But anyway, we talk about pricing on this. Uh, at the beginning of the year, um, we did have to go up on our prices. Gas is going up. Everything's going up. So I had to go up a little bit. But if you order it, and I've got a really good friend that owns a real estate company here in town, and he invariably called me on Tuesday for a Friday closing. That makes everything completely upside down. I'm booked between now and Friday. Yeah. I'm already booked between now and Friday this week with just enough room for me to take care of an emergency or two. But he always called and it always upside down and everybody's scheduled. So if you order it three weeks before closing, it's $65. Two weeks before closing is $85. And seven days, which means if you order it Friday, Monday, or Tuesday for a Friday closing, it's $125. And my buddy is still paying us $125. I don't know what the deal is. A lot of people say, well, you know, I, I don't want you to go out there and it not close. Well, I'd rather go out there and void the invoice because it didn't close than upside down everybody's schedule, especially mine because, you know, I may have only had five today or six and now I got eight. So that, that's what happens and we're going into that season. But they're only good for 30 days. Yes, a, a termite letter is only good for 30 days from the date of issue. Okay. It's it's the it's good for 90 days after the close and it's kind of the industry standard around here so for example you sold the house i closed it on the last, last day of, of april that gives me may june and july that if termites stick their head through the wall not only do i have to treat them but if it's live activity i have to fix it so um i've only had to fix one and all of them, you know, knock on wood. I've only had to fix one. There's a preacher and his wife out in uh, Owens Crossroads and nine weeks after closing. And what happened is it's an old Wayne's environmental house and the whole neighborhood was and the, the seller didn't pay their renewal at, at the first year. Wayne's came and picked up their termite station, which any company would. I'm not down in Wayne's because they're a good company, but they did and I've done it and I would. And so nine weeks later, there was a piece of corn around that was about this long that was eaten up with termites. And the lady said, you missed it. And I said, there ain't no way I missed it. It wasn't here when I was here. She said, well, how did this happen? I said, well, calling a termite takes a pound of wood a day. You know, and it didn't take long to eat this little bitty piece of corn around. 
you know, four foot wide. So I think I paid $75 for him to fix it, replace it. And Stephen, my, my son works for my partner. And Stephen said, start at the garage and go this way and dig into, you don't find termites anymore. 85 feet later, he got clear of termites. And so we treated all that with liquid and we put a free termite job around our house. So there is one thing that, that it, it talks about, which is concealed damage. So, you know, let's say that you bought the house and, and you want to pull that window out, and put in other doors or something, you know, if, if there's previous termite activity there, that's concealed damage. And I probably treated four or five of those that I shouldn't have, but it was the right thing to do. I had one back, it was February, and the lady had closed her house four months before, and it was truly concealed damage. And we, we went on and treated it. And, and she said, well, I mean, and she started, I always think it's funny because I always start wanting to talk about an attorney first. I'm like, well, you know, here's the deal. This thing's going to cost me a lot of money to win and prove that I'm right. And I know I am, according to what we're reading here, but it's just easier for me to treat it. My name and reputation and, and what it's going to cost me is a, lot, is a lot cheaper than what all that would be. So we, we do that more than we should. Thank God we don't have to do it very often. But we've all missed it. We all make mistakes. Um, I, I was in a house three years ago and uh, my phone was ringing off the hook. And so uh, I, I answered the phone. It's like the fourth time I answered the phone and I turned the wrong way and went a different direction. And I got down in the road and I called my partner and I said, I need you to go to this address because I know I miss these termites. I just can't find them. And I turned the wrong way. Sure enough, there were nine termite tubes on the wall. So we did catch it, but we do things like that. And we do make mistakes, and it, it is a numbers game. Uh, we see uh, in, the, in the busy season, uh, I got one guy that sees 30 houses a week, another guy sees 20. I can go 30. Uh, my partner can go 30. So we see a lot of houses, and we, we do make mistakes, but we fix our mistakes. And it's not a, a long, we work for a company, four of us did, and it could always be a long, drawn-out process, but we don't. Um, so, you know, you fill this out. Uh, I've left a card here. There is a phone number right here that you can call. This phone number used to be a cell phone. Uh, we got so busy that I captured that number and brought it in as a landline. So call that number because I got three other lines that go with it. And there's three or four of us that can answer the phone. And we'll be happy to take your information and we'll call you back and schedule it. Unless Beverly answers the phone, she can cancel it right then, usually. Um, my card's also here. I can get you an email, the email address to send it to. Okay, let me give that to her. I can, you know, just fill it out, take a picture of it, email it. It's the easiest thing. It doesn't have to be. It, it, it's not painful, I promise. It only becomes painful for everybody if you don't give us all the information on the sheet, because I can't schedule it if I don't have the information. Seller's name is important. Um, and, and one of the reasons it's important is because all of your closing attorneys don't like getting blank termite letters. And that's the way a lot of companies do it. They just, they, you know, there's no names on it. I, I had several uh, attorneys that I'm friends with. And they're, you know, when we started doing this, they're like, hey, could y'all put names on these things? So it makes their job easier. Uh, when we're sending this, and we've got the email addresses for every closing attorney in town that we that I know of. But when we're, and we also need to make sure we have your email address because when we've done the letter, now it's time to send it. We send it to you and we send it to your closing attorney. If you need it to go with anybody else, we're going to let you do that for you, you know, mm -hmm. because you need to be in control of it. And I actually have agents that want me to send it to four other people and I, no. Just skip the no. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I sent one to an agent one time this a while back and I'm on the road and she's like, I need you to send this to the mortgage company. And I'm like, I'm in Scottsboro. There's no way. I sent it to you. Well, I'm busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all are. Y'all are busy too. 
and we try not, you know. Um, so let's talk about something else. Uh, I can't, and no legitimate termite company is going to guarantee somebody else's work. Somebody else's okay. Maybe not. Oh, there she is. Hey, Roslyn. I can't guarantee somebody else's work. I had an agent call me. I won't tell you what company she was with. <coughs> Keller Williams. <laughs> but it was like a Tuesday. And when this agent calls me, my first thing is, well, who else has been there? And why wouldn't they give you a letter? I didn't, you know. But but the, the first thing she said was, is, uh, I've got this house and we've already had it treated for mold. And I'm like, well, who said it had mold? Oh, well, the home inspector did. And she's the listing agent. I'm like, and you believed him? Did you have it tested? There is an outside company that does test for that. But when they test for that, and this is why I like to use outside companies for that, when they test for that, they actually write protocols. Joe Blow Crawl Space, you know, even if he tests it, he's the one that wants to do the work and, and he's not going to write protocols for it and he's not going to treat it really the way it should be. And everything in a crawl space ends up testing for mold because all fungus tests positive for mold. So, and it doesn't go the other way with mold. So um, I always have a problem with that, but she's like, well, we've already had the termite part cleared. I just need you to clear the fungus part. And I'm like, well, why didn't the company that did your termite inspection clear it? And she said, oh, well, they didn't get the work. Well, that's not really the way it is, kind of, but not really. So here's the way this deal goes. That seller spent $9,500 on a treatment that I probably would have done for $3,500, just off the cuff, okay? For a fungus treatment, that the listing agent took the word of the, the home inspector and said it was mold. They called Joe Blow Crawl Space Company and he didn't say it was mold. In fact, I, I, I have seen all of their um, um, quotes and it clearly states this is, this, that this is not a mold report, that this is, you know, and so it clearly states all that. And they normally say, well, we'll treat it. That's, their, that's the way they work. But they're charging 9,500, and I've seen it go as high as 15,000 for this treatment. Again, that I could have done for 3,500, and and the seller's the one that's hurt. This this is I I hurt for people like that that are spending unnecessary money because it was just wood decaying fungus. But the problem is, is that it's a 300,000 dollar house, and if my homeschool no offense to homeschool parents. But if my homeschool math is, is correct, that's about $18,000 in global commission. So the agents got their money at the table. The crawl space company got their $9,500 probably before the closing or at the table. And Wayne here with Crown Service has to be responsible for the work that this other company did for $50. Back then it was a $50, $65 now. So I can't do that. That's business suicide, number one. And number two, I'm responsible to the state of Alabama. I'm responsible to the buyer, my liability insurance company, my omissions and errors insurance. Y'all have those two, I know. And any attorney that wants to sue me. And so that's why I can't do it. And the other company that went out and did it, they, you know, they said they didn't do it because they didn't get the money. That's part of it. But legitimate termite companies do not uh, guarantee somebody else's work because that just means I'm on the hook for it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and that's a big one. And, and usually, you know, between me and the listing agent, hopefully we can stop the train, you know, that's leaving the station, which is the mold train. Uh, again, because the state of Alabama doesn't regulate mold. Um, but I get that a lot. I get that a whole lot. Anybody worked with uh, Norm, Norm uh, Nicastro? You know Norm? You know Norm Randall? Norm's hilarious. Norm calls me every Tuesday and says, the first thing he says is, Wayne, I'm in a jam. He's down in your other office. 
why am I in a jam? I'm like, when are you not, Norm? You know, I said, and I'm like, why can't your other company get it? He's like, you're my only company. I'm like, don't start that with me. Y'all sell way too many houses. So anyway, uh, I have fun at what I do. Uh, I'm open to any questions that anybody has. I, <clears throat> this is tough without more people and this hybrid thing, which I'm kind of okay with. Uh, but I want to answer questions. Issues. Here's the main thing. If, if I've done a termite inspection for you three weeks before closing, you ordered it three weeks before closing, and it's two days before closing and it falls through, please call me and tell me it fell through and I'll void the invoice for the termite letter. There are some companies that will continue to send you invoices because they want to get paid. I'm not up for doing free inspections. Now, I'll fix that statement in a second. But I will avoid the invoice, and I'm happy to do it. Uh, the other thing that I really ask is, is that if you're the buyer's agent or the listing agent, and you had me do work for it and your seller signed for it, please call me and tell me it didn't close so we can make arrangements to monitor that so that I do get paid. It's really important to me that I get paid. If I did $3,000 of work, of work on your client's house, or if you're the buyer's agent, if I did $3,000 worth of work, if you don't tell me that it didn't close, I don't always know. I spend, I spend a week, the first week of every month, calling attorneys saying, hey, did this close? And I'm not talking about for a $65 termite letter. I'm talking about, you know, $1,800, $2,800 worth of work. <clears throat> and I need my money just like everybody else does. So if so, closing gets pushed back and we need a new letter. Okay, that's a great question. It's called an update. Okay. That's what we call it. Hey, this letter's going to expire. And now mortgage companies will tell you and some attorneys that they're good for 45 days. That's not true. They have decided in their minds that it's good for 45 days, and that's what they tell you. Mm -hmm. So, but I don't charge to update. Oh, okay. So, so that, and here's why. Because if you close that loan on the 31st day, and on the 60th day it has termites, I'm not going to cover it because I would have probably found it when I was there doing the, you know. So, and, I, and sometimes it happens, not very often. But if you don't tell me, I can't go do it. And, and so they're not, you know, and then some mortgage companies, I had a, I'm in a BNI chapter and I, and I have a really good friend that's in my chapter. And we were talking about termite letters, you know, and she, she spouted off that, well, you know, uh, if it's a conventional loan, it doesn't have to have a termite letter. Well, the state of Alabama wants all real estate transactions to have termite letters. So that's up to you. I, you know, and, and this is where um, we used to do free inspections, and this is where I've drawn the line on free inspections. And here's why. So it's conventional loan, and you don't need a termite letter. then, you know, there's no protection for your client, first of all. So I, I'd be happy to go out there. And I get those calls once in a while. Uh, you know, hey, that house you looked at, it had termites. I, I'm sorry. They didn't want a termite letter. They had no protection. And they got an opinion. And there's nothing I can do for you. You should have gotten the letter. I mean, it's $65. You know, everybody thinks that's going to break the bank. Well, if they can't afford a $65 letter, our fiduciary responsibility to our buyer. Yeah, but but the state of Alabama, you know, maybe y'all might buy that house if you can't afford a $65 letter. Uh, and I'm cheap, believe me, but but it is protection for your clients. And, and uh, I have a house for Norm, and it had fungus on it. And Norm was the listing agent. And I told the buyer's agent, I said, look. I said, she said, well, they don't need a letter. And I said, yeah, they do. Because they have no protection whatsoever. I've treated this for the homeowner. And I'm walking away from it. And what happened? And they paid me. And what happens if they get termites in 60 days? Oh, well, huh. So they did get a letter and, it, and it's all about the protection. And look, I don't make any money on $65. You 
you know, by the time Beverly spends an hour on each one of these getting them set up, and I send my guys out there and they spend two hours of their day going out to wherever it is, doing the inspection, filling out the paperwork, and, and, and you know, and driving back. I mean, I'm lucky to make five or 10 bucks off of it. I don't, I don't make a huge fortune off of it. But, you know, it's all about the protection for your clients. So remember, just think that they need a termite letter. And I don't know, do y'all's contracts as the listing agents, does it say you'll provide a, a, a clear termite letter? I know some of them do for your company. I know Norm always calls me and says, excuse me, I look there if you want. I think in the sales contract, it states in there and you have to have a wood infestation report. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, Norm calls me on his, his, his listings a lot. Oh. And he says, I have to I have to provide them a clear letter. Okay. You might so just be doing that on the maybe he does. Days. Maybe that's yeah. 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 Maybe that's something that they do. If you um, one, so. Right. <laughs> but uh um so yeah, I mean in in it, it's okay if you don't get it, but your client has no protection whatsoever. And 90 days is 90 days. And 90 days today is a lot different than 90 days this summer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of things change in this next 90 days. And that's why, you know, I may be calling you saying, hey, it's got 19%. We're going to have to treat it because it will be at 20%. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then we'll all be in trouble. And so that, that's the reason. Uh, I get eight, I find termites on houses and I get agents that call me and they say, well, you know, we'll take the letter, but we're not going to do the termite treatment. Well, I can't do the letter without a termite treatment. Um, let's talk about termites. There's, there's three types of termites that have to be addressed in a, in a termite letter. There's, there's no visual evidence of termites. That's a clear letter. There's a house that I can see termite damage on it but it has drill marks in the concrete about the structure and the block and the brick. So that's a clear termite letter. It's, it's marked as previous activity. Then there's actually, there's, there's two of them. There's two more. I'm sorry, I lied, there's four. There's uh, termites that are running around when I'm there. Those require treatment. And then there's termite activity with no treatment they didn't go away on their own, and that's going to have to be treated too. Uh, my partner and I, when we first got in the business, he missed one. He said, I knew I should have required a treatment. 60 days later, it had swarmers popping out. And so it had to be, you know, we had to treat it. Uh, but those are those required treatments. It's not that big a deal. You know, I know what all my competition charges. Some people charge a little less than I do. There's one company in general that does. Um, but I think I do a better job than most. Uh, so on a real estate transaction, every um, treatment on the dwelling itself and the attached garage that we do is a bond. Contract and bond are the same thing, okay? So if it's had live termite activity on a house, it gets a retreat contract. I'll review it in three years if we had any other problems. I may I may change it to a repair. But but those, you know, that requires a little bit of time. Most companies, there's only two companies that I know of uh, that will put a repair contract on a house that's got active termites. Uh, but then they've got so many exclusions that people usually don't get it fixed. Uh, but but we've been very fortunate, you know, on that. Um, the only spot treatment I'll do, so a house is under contract with a company and it's got a detached garage out back and it has termites, I'll do a liquid spot treatment around it. It's about 450 for that, depending on how big it is. But the average is about 450 for that. And that's a no guarantee, which means I just treat it and that's good enough for the state. And it's got a bond on it, so we we don't uh, proof a bond too, and so we don't. Uh, but if if the detached garage has something on it, and the house is not under bond or has no what we call post construction termite treatment, then uh, I got to treat both of them. I don't have any choice on that. Um, 
had a deputy sheriff in Limestone County hang up on me two weeks ago because I was trying to explain to him what he had to do. And he said that somebody else would do, do different. I, used to, I knew that company. And I'm like, mm -hmm. can I try to help you with that? And he just hung up on me. But four days later, he sent me the paperwork to do the treatment. So uh, we're running pretty good on treatments. If, if you, you know, if you've got a closing Friday and you send me that, that paperwork on Wednesday or Thursday, chances are I won't get it treated until Monday or Tuesday the next week. That's why I like three weeks too. You got plenty of time to get everything worked out. You know, send me the paperwork in a decent amount of time and we'll get you foreclosed. But if something happens, what happens is once they sign the paperwork and get it to my office, we send a clear termite letter, we send a, a, a treated termite letter so it's clear. And we send all the information so we get it treated. Don't call me and ask me if it's been treated because my automatic response to that is you have a contract that says it was the, the, a contract and an invoice and a clear termite letter that all says it's true. So, you know, 48 business hours is about as far as it goes, but I promise you that the treatment's done before I get my money. You close on Friday, most, I'm the last guy that gets paid. Y'all know that? I'm the last guy that gets paid as a rule because everybody else got their money at the closing table. You know, they mail me my check, and sometimes it's the following Wednesday because the lady back in the back doesn't cut the checks till Wednesday. And she didn't cut it for this closing for me. So that's usually the way it goes. So I promise you, it'll be treated long before close, you know. And again, I'm back to, and Randall, I'm picking on you because you're on the screen. But again, I'm back to uh, my name, my reputation, my insurance, and everything else. You know, I'm, I'm not going to stiff somebody. I mean, you know, if, if you sign the paperwork, I'll get it treated. But I'm about to get into that season, you know, where everybody waits till Thursday night to send me the paperwork. Nina got mad and left. Where, where everybody, where everybody uh, sends me the paperwork on Thursday night, I, there's no way I'm going to treat So, uh, any questions at all? Rosalind, how are you today? Okay. okay. I'm doing good. I'm driving. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Then go back to driving if you can hear. <laughs> I just left from a showing and then the notification popped up and I was like, oh, no, let me hop on. <laughs> you but I did. I caught, I caught most of what you said. Um, good. And it was um, very informative. Thank you. Good. Well, I don't have anything unless we've got questions. But other than this, I want to be real clear about this. I will help anybody. If you've got a pre-listing, you know, or a listing, and you want me to go out there and get it inspected real quick before you get too far in the process, I don't charge for that. I may not do it if you keep getting me to give you pricing on what's wrong and, and, and the seller continues to go somewhere else or you recommend another term, I'm just saying. Um, doesn't happen very often, but there are a few agents that I've had to do that with. Um, if you need a second opinion, there's no charge for that. So Joe Blow Termite Company came in and said, hey, you got fungus and termites and we got to treat for it. Call me. I'll come look at it. If you have it, you know, I'll be happy to give you a competitive price. If it's if it if their deal is better than mine, I'll tell you nobody owes me any money. My goal is to help you guys all I can as the, the listing agent. You know, because, you know, the buyer, the seller actually gets to decide who does the work. So my goal is to help you guys out all that I can. I'm more than happy to. Um, if you just want to call and ask me about something that's going on, whether you do business with me or not on that particular house, I'll be happy to help you. It's, it's, it's nothing for me to do that because I'd rather, for me, the more educated you are, the more you help me in the long run. And you help yourself. So I'm more than happy. I get calls every day. Hey, Wayne, didn't you say, you know, uh, I'm like, yeah, I said it, you know. Um, so here's one thing as a listing agent that I wouldn't accept from anybody. If they tell you it needs a fungus treatment and they don't give you a moisture meter reading, don't accept it. Call me. I'm going right out. 
call me because most of them don't send pictures. Most of them will send a picture of, of what's on the board, but there's no moisture meter reading. I go out there and I put my probe in there and I'm at 14% and it's August. So it's all previous, but they're trying to get a treatment out of it. So um, call me. Those are things I like to go out on. And if it is fungus, I'll do what I can, you know. Um, I had an agent that called me on Thursday afternoon for a Friday closing and said, hey, such and such was going to charge me 450 to treat that fungus. Would you go over to, to Decatur and see if that's a good price? Not that late in the game. You know, you didn't just get that price today. So, uh, I mean, I want to help you, but I can't, at that point, I can't help you, you know. Um, let's talk about some things that I can't do and no other term my company sh should do either. Um, oh, by the way, if you send me to a house and they've got, and, it, and, and it's occupied, but they're going to let me in without them being there or you being there, which is okay with me. I don't have any problem with that. But if they've got a dog that's running loose, we can't go in. We, we just can't. I've been bit five times in my career by dogs. And, and the last one about dislocated my left shoulder. So it's, it, that's a huge liability for us uh, and for the homeowners. So it's just easier, you know, tell them put the dog up in a crate or something, or we can make arrangements when they are there. Um, we don't all finish at two o'clock in the afternoon like a lot of people think we do. I own the company and I can't even get through it at two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, but uh, uh, some other things I can't do, it's two block high and there's plumbing pipes and AC trunk line pipes running all over the crawl space. I can't get in it. If I can't get in it, I can't treat it, you know? Um, and, and my guys basically need to be able to turn over under there in order for that to happen. I don't mind, you know, three block high and I gotta go all the way down the end of the trunk line and come all the way back. We all complain about it, but I, I, at least I can see what I need to see. And, and the main thing is in these, I've got to be able to treat it because if I've got one and I give it a clear letter, and on the other side of all that stuff that I just mentioned, the plumbing and the, the air conditioner trunk lines, termites pop up and swarmers come up in the house. The only way to get in that side of the house, usually, is to cut a hole in the floor. I can't afford to do that for a $65 termite letter, and most companies can't. And so there are a few things that I can't do. Uh, I can help you with that, you know, um, uh, but that, that's a big one, usually about three block high, you know, and a way to get over to the other side, however that looks, you know. Um, if it's, does everybody know the difference in a built-in garage and a built-over garage? Okay, here is the garage floor. Built-in garage means they put the, the tile or the carpet right on top of the cement floor, and then they closed in the opening. Does everybody, everybody got that? Okay. And you know, you go down your couple of steps to, from the kitchen down in there, okay? Built-over garage <clears throat> means that you walk from the kitchen straight into the, to the living area, and you don't go down the steps, and it was a former garage. And so there's a space under there that can be about as high as from the table to the floor here. No one made a hole in there for me to see. I can't give that a clear letter until somebody either knocks a hole in where I get in there or I do. And that's the only thing that I collect for up front on a real estate transaction, because I had three of them when I first started doing it where they I did that, they had termites and they had somebody else go and do the, the work and, and I was out 350 bucks. That's pretty labor intensive. And my price goes by labor intensiveness, the cost of the product, aggravation. Irritation. Well, the aggravation is how aggravated I'm gonna get about my partner complaining about it. Mm -hmm. So, so, Steve Corbett's my partner. I'll tell you this real quick and then and I can wind down real, real easy. I want time to do this even. Oh. Can, can. Okay. So um, 
I handle the inspection side of everything. I run all the inspections and, and Beverly answers to me and we do all the scheduling. We all go out and do it. My partner, Steve Corbett, handles all of the operations, all the pest control, mosquito control, termite protection, um, fungus, all the, the cross-based work. He, he runs all of that. And he also is in charge of our building and all of our vehicles. So, which is not good for me because the only way I ever get my vehicle fixed is if he drives it. So that's the only way. I drive the worst, I drive the worst vehicle fleet when he up on the fleet. Uh, it's just the way it goes. Um, but uh, again, thanks for bearing with me. I appreciate everybody being here. My number's on my business card. Randall, we'll make sure you get a copy of that. Call if you have any questions. If you want to talk to me, if I'm not in the office, they'll get you in touch with me quickly. Rosalind, thank you. Randall, thank you. Hey, I got a quick story for you. Yes, sir. So I was doing a rehab down in Mobile, and the company assured me that the colony was dead. They said it was dead. The, the damage was extensive. So when I pulled the header off, I took a termite shower because the man oh, yeah. didn't know what he was. Oh, yeah. I opened up. Yeah, I'm with you. I opened up one one time and they just started dropping out of the, it was a little raised area and they just started dropping. The house was eat up with termites. So, yeah. Yeah. And people don't understand. So does everybody understand what a post-construction treatment was? I kind of, okay. So all houses in the state of Alabama, when they're built, are required to have a termite treatment. Uh, let's say it's a slab, for example. So if they treat it chemically, they spray down the rock in the ground with, with a termiticide prior to pouring the concrete. That's good for anywhere from three to seven years. Um, the average lifespan on it's about three to four years. I get a lot of termite. How do you know if they do that? Well, okay. So on a new house, and the question was, how do we know if they do that? Uh, so there's a form. Mm -hmm that's supposed to be given on all new construction mm -hmm. that tells you the buyer how many gallons they used and what they used. And there is a letter that is a pre-treat letter. Okay. that's only good on new construction. Okay. That's supposed to be done by a licensed termite company. Okay. You're supposed to get that paperwork as a buyer. Now what happens now, because Wayne's Environmental has the market cornered on this, so the yard is all 100% complete. Everything's done. And Wayne's comes out and they drop their termite stations around, the green centricon stations. That's what I saw when I was at Terminates. And um, that's a pre-treat too. And you get a you get what's called a pre-treat that I don't remember, it's a number, but you get that that as well. Okay. It's the same thing. Okay. So termite stations that have an active ingredient, there's only two of them. One of them is Trelona, that's what I use. And the other one is, is uh, Centricon, which is by Dow AgriSciences. Uh, they both come with the, the equivalent of, pre, it's called pre treat Okay. Then those are both treatment for new construction. Okay. So, uh, but, but uh, post-construction treatment is uh, drill marks needed in concrete abutting the structure, like a porch or the garage, the living area. Uh, drill marks in the brick and drill marks in the block or base stations. That's all classified as post construction. Mm -hmm. It was done after it was built. So, uh, but I don't have anything else. If anybody doesn't have any questions, thank you for your time, everybody. We appreciate it. And uh, thank you, sir. All right. Y'all take care. Thank you. Day. All right. Bye bye. Bye. I don't know how to turn this off. I guess. Okay. I'm not very. Technologically. Yeah, there you go.